the students how are you uh, today uh, our topic is knee joint so i'm going to discuss knee joint so knee joint is the largest and most complicated joint in the body uh, as you know that it is a complex joint because of presence of articular discs in the form of the two menisci and uh, knee joint consists of it is a bicondylar type of joint as you can see that it is this, it this joint is formed between the lower end of the femur and upper end of the tibia so lower end of the femur has got two convex condyles whereas upper end of the tibia has got two flat surfaces which is called tibial plateau and two condyles medial condyle of the tibia lateral condyle of the tibia lateral condyle of the femur and medial condyle of the femur as you can see that this articular surfaces these are covered by means of a cartilage here you can see and this is hyaline cartilage so as you uh, know that the two condylar surfaces are incongruent because lower end of the femur is convex whereas the upper end of the tibia or tibial plateau is flat it is just like placing a football which is a rounded or convex structure on a flat table top or floor so you can see that this here the minimum area of the football is touching the surface of the table or uh, you know floor at a time here you can see only this part is touching and rest of the football is up in the air so what nature has done to overcome this problem as you know that in rural areas uh, our women they carry water look at uh, through, uh, in pots which are convex in shape and head is also convex in shape so what they do, these women do they put a cushion rounded ring like cushion on their head just to stabilize the convex pot on the convex head so here you can see that this is the femur and tibia inferior view of the femur articular surface and top view of the tibia articular surface so here you can see that the uh, femoral inferior end is convex there at the top uh, tibial uh, you know articular surface is flat and here we have got intercondylar area between two condyles so as a result it is a bicondylar because medial condyle of the femur articulates with the medial condyle of the tibia and lateral condyle of the femur articulates with the lateral condyle of the tibia so before jumping on to the you know capsule i want you to understand the concept of capsule what actually capsule is capsule is here you can see uh, these are two bones which are participating to make a joint and here we have got you know this uh, articular surface which is covered by means of a hyaline cartilage hyaline cartilage and articular surface hyaline cartilage and there as capsule has got two layers outer fibrous and inner synovial this synovial layer the light pink one this light pink one it lines the outer fibrous layer from inside in, in, in inner aspect and between these two articular surface here we have got all joint cavity joint cavity which is filled with synovial fluid produced by this synovial layer and what is ligament ligament is intrinsic ligament intrinsic ligament is nothing but the thickening of a joint capsule is called a ligament here you can see this is ligament if this thickening is on the medial aspect then it is called medial collateral ligament if this thickening is on the lateral side it is called lateral collateral ligament likewise so in case here again articular surface is covered with hyaline cartilage and this synovial layer outer fibrous layer synovial layer it lines the out, uh, fibrous layer from inside then it reflects back and attach onto the articular margin here articular margin and what is articular margin articular margin is the point where this thick you know uh, articular cartilage it you know becomes it stops here 
it becomes thin and it stops here. This, this particular point is called articular margin. So, as I told you that uh, to this, this here you can see, this is the knee joint uh, has been two portions of the knee joint. They have been uh, separated from each other. This is the top view of the tibia, as you can see, and this is the inferior view of the femur. So top view of the femur, th there are two structures which are called menisci. Menisci, one is the lateral meniscus and other is the medial meniscus. Medial meniscus. These menisci, these are the structures which actually help to help this uh, in the step these are fibrocartilages which helps in stabilization of the knee joint as we have already discussed the femoral lower end is convex and it has to get stabilized onto the flat surface of the tibia so for that nature has got these two menisci menisci has got anterior horn because this is anterior aspect this is posterior aspect so medial meniscus lateral meniscus medial meniscus has got anterior horn and posterior horn these two horns they are they attach onto the intercondylar area whereas lateral meniscus it has got anterior horn it has got posterior horn and these two horns they attached or uh, also attach onto the intercondylar area and these are cruciate ligaments here you can see cruciate ligament these four structures are intra-articular structures intra-articular structures structures within the uh, you know um, uh, intra-articular but outside the joint cavity outside the joint cavity here you can see this is capsule of the knee joint again capsule of joint has got two layers outer fibrous inner synovial outer fibrous and inner synovial and this synovial membrane it reflects back and moves away from the this fibrous layer and it wraps the cruciate ligament so as a result cruciate ligament both anterior and posterior they are left outside the joint cavity joint cavity is within this boundary of this red line i mean here all here all this is the synovial layer so they wrap these synovial membranes they wrap around the cruciate ligament in such a way that cruciate ligaments are left outside these so as a result these anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments they are intra-articular but outside the joint cavity but outside the joint cavity So here we have got medial condyle and lateral condyle of the tibia and here we this is the intercondylar area all intercondylar area here we can see four blue spots and two pink spots four blue spots for the attachment of the medial and lateral meniscus for example posterior horn of the medial meniscus would attach here then meniscus would you know uh, uh, cover the tibial surface and anterior horn would be attached here so as a result meniscus word means crescent or lunar or moon like crescent so posterior horn then here meniscus and anterior horn attached over here likewise on the medial side anterior horn is attached here then this meniscus would you know present in the joint cavity then all around and it will be attached here and this pink area is for the attachment of the anterior cruciate ligament and posterior cruciate ligament now this look at this yellow lining this is synovial layer attachment synovial layer of the capsule of a uh, knee joint it's attached on the articular margin here this is articular surface articular surface it is covered with hyaline cartilage this all surface likewise here it is all covered with hyaline but this particular edge of the this articular surface is called articular margin 
here this edge of the articular surface is also called articular margin and this yellow line which is synovial layer which attaches itself onto the articular margin look at here look here so this synovial layer when it folds around it keeps the it le it leaves the cruciate ligament out of this cavity so joint cavity is present within the boundary of this yellow marking here here as a result we have got two joint cavities right and left because as you can see that this yellow margin it leaves the cruciate red uh, pink spots outside and these attachments for the menisci it is present within the boundary of these yellow lines so joint cavity these cruciate ligaments are intraarticular but outside the joint cavity so ligaments can be divided into extra capsular ligaments capsular ligaments intra capsular ligament extra capsular ligaments are those that lie outside the capsule capsular ligaments are those which are thickening of the capsule itself intra capsular those which are present within the uh, you know uh, within that capsule so i'm going to address all of them one by one here we have got capsular ligament or extra cap ligament lateral collateral and medial collateral the other name for lateral collateral is fibular collateral because it attach on its superior it is attached to the uh, lateral condyle epicondyle of the femur and inferiorly it is attached to the head of the fibula likewise medial collateral ligament medial collateral ligaments up uh, superiorly it is attached to the medial epicondyle of the femur and inferiorly attached it is attached onto on the uh, tibia this green one and this gray one okay green one and gray one so this is what these are the collateral tibial and medial collateral ligament uh, lateral collateral ligament strengthens the knee joint from the lateral aspect whereas tibial collateral ligament strengthens the knee joint from the medial aspect these ligaments are actually part of the capsule these are the thickening of the capsule so here you can see again menisci the um, menisci these are crescent shaped structures they are present within the joint cavity and joint uh, intracapsular posterior horn and anterior horn posterior horn and anterior horn and this meniscus is thick on its lateral aspect in outer border whereas thin on inner side uh, inner aspect so as a result in cut section uh, these uh, you know menisci would appear as a wedge shaped here this is rounded lower end of the femur this is flat tibia and here we have got menisci two menisci medial and lateral these are c shaped structure and these are fibrocartilages they actually help this rounded you know uh, uh, lower end of the femur to sit on the flat tibia so these these two structure actually help rounded head to sit on the flat tibia so look at this thing these are fibrocartilages and they absorb the shock shock absorbing in nature and fibrocartilages okay so outer edge or outer bond is thick is thick whereas on inner aspect it is thin so in cut section these you know menisci would appear as a wedge shaped structures so here again look at this thing these are menisci this is knee joint anterior view and flexed flexed knee joint is flexed either view and here we have got rounded lower end of the uh, articular surface of the convex outer uh, surface of the femur 
and flat tibia and here we have got two menisci so here uh, this is fibular collateral ligament and here we have got tibial collateral ligament tibial collateral ligament strengthens the knee joint from medial aspect and lateral collateral ligament strengthens the knee joint from the lateral aspect the important point is that this tibial collateral ligament here you can see it's deeper you know fibers they gets attach themselves to the medial meniscus medial collateral ligament yet or tibial collateral ligament their deep fibers attached are attached to the or tethered to or attached to the this uh, uh, medial meniscus so here medial collateral ligament or tibial collateral its deeper fibers they are attached to this medial meniscus whereas there is a gap between the lateral meniscus and lateral collateral ligament and this gap in this gap there is a tendon of popliteus muscle is present so condition a situation on both sides is different medial collateral is directly attached to the medial meniscus whereas lateral collateral is not attached to the lateral meniscus and it has got clinical uh, value because uh, uh, of clinical significance uh, as you would you know uh, 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 study about the um, you know read about uh, unhappy triad in that unhappy triad medial meniscus is more commonly injured as compared to the lateral meniscus because this medial collateral ligament is attached to the uh, you know uh, this medial meniscus so whenever there is a strain or uh, injury to this medial collateral as a result this medial uh, meniscus would also get injured so and here we have got two cruciate ligaments two cruciate ligament these cruciate ligaments basically connect the tibia and femur together they join them together these two cruciate ligament these are called cruciate because of they cross each other within the joint uh, within the joint as i have already told you that these two ligaments they are intraarticular but outside the joint cavity so one is anterior cruciate other one is posterior cruciate now look at the, the, the inferiorly they both of them they are attached on to the uh, intercondylar area one is uh, uh, and uh, in the anterior part of the intercondylar area the other one is in the posterior part of the intercondylar area let me show you diagram yeah here this both intercondylar area between these two condyles the pink one is anterior attachment for the anterior cruciate ligament and the uh, this uh, this is the posterior attach, uh, attachment for the posterior cruciate ligament so anterior cruciate is attached to the anterior part of intercondylar area and posterior cruciate is attached on, uh, in the posterior part of the intercondylar area this is anterior aspect so what actually happens to these two cruciate ligaments what they actually do as i've told you that these two cruciate ligament they cross each other within the joint within the joint uh, within the boundaries of the capsule because these are intracapsular just like a letter x alpha alphabet x so imagine you are looking at these two these are two cruciate ligaments you are looking at them from, from the lateral aspect this is anterior cruciate because this is anterior part this is post, uh, posterior aspect here we have got uh, uh, in the inferior part both of them they are attached into the intercondylar area of the femur and superiorly their superior and both of them they are attached to the femur uh, so what actually is happening this in uh, anterior cruciate ligament attach onto the in anterior intercondylar area then its fibers moves upward and posteriorly and uh, they attach onto the uh, medial posterior part medial aspect of the lateral condyle whereas posterior inter uh, you know cruciate ligament 
its fibers move uh, anteriorly and medially and they attached onto the lateral aspect of the medial condyle now i'm going to show you both of both these structures here inferiorly attached onto the anterior part of the anterior condylar area and fibers move upward backward and laterally and they are attached this is flexed knee joint flexed knee joint and anterior view flexed knee joint and anterior view so move upward backward and this is lateral condyle lateral surface of the lateral condyle and medial surface of the lateral condyle so anterior cruciate ligament is attached onto the medial surface of the lateral condyle whereas here we have got posterior cruciate ligament here this posterior cruciate ligament this one sorry this one was anterior this is posterior this is posterior view of the knee extended knee again flexed view of the uh, anterior view of the flexed knee and posterior view of the extended knee so this posterior cruciate ligament this posterior cruciate ligament here it is as it is posterior view it is attached onto the intercondylar area posterior part and its fibers move upward and medially and attached onto the medial condyle this is medial condyle and it is medial surface of the medial condyle and this is lateral surface of the medial condyle so posterior cruciate is attached onto the medial surface of the medial uh, sorry lateral surface of the medial condyle Again, here we have got anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate. Again, you see two menisci and two cruciates. Anterior view, uh, anterior aspect, posterior aspect, anterior horn, posterior horn of medial meniscus. anterior horn posterior horn of lateral meniscus all these you know horns they attach into intercondylar area then here we have got cruciate anterior cruciate and posterior cruciate okay now you are looking at the knee joint from the medial aspect medial collateral ligament superiorly it is attached to the uh, medial epicondyle and inferiorly it is attached to tibia and again here we are looking at the knee joint from the lateral aspect superiorly lateral collateral ligament is attached to the lateral epicondyle and inferiorly it is attached to the head of the fibula so it divides this ligament divides the you know uh, bicep femoris tendon into two two parts the bicep femoris tendon and anterior part and posterior part between these two parts is attached this fibular ligament now in this diagram you can see the posterior aspect of the joint capsule posterior aspect of the joint capsule this is all fibrous layer joint capsule and this is popliteal surface because popliteal fossa has been you know muscles of the popliteal fossa has been removed just to make you give a better understanding of the deeper structure here you can see here we have got semi membranosus of a few fibers of this tendon they reflect back superiorly and laterally towards the lateral condyle of the femur so as a result here we have got oblique fibers <coughs> these are called oblique fibers or oblique popliteal ligament this ligament is present makes the floor of the popliteal fossa beside that there is another ligament which is called arcuate ligament inferiorly this arcuate ligament is attached to the head of the fibula and this these fibers move upward and medially and arc over the and arch over the or arc over the popliteal muscle and they fuse with the capsule so as a result there is a deficiency in the capsule in the posteriorly and laterally posteriorly and laterally there is capsule 
there's a uh, there's a deficiency within the capsule through that deficiency the tendon of the popliteus muscles comes out the portion of the popliteus muscle has been removed just to give you view of the underlying attachment of a capsule otherwise it is a continuous muscle here triangular shaped muscle so likewise as i have already discussed about this is the uh, sagittal section of the knee joint lower end of the femur upper end of the tibia covered by means of a cartilage which is called hyaline cartilage here hyaline cartilage covering the lower end of the femur and hyaline cartilage covering the tibial plateau here tibial tibia tibial plateau so these are wedge shaped structures are called menisci in cut section as i have told you earlier that the c shaped menisci are thicker on their outer edge where as thinner or uh, near their inner edge so as a result in cut section it gives them appearance of a wedge so so and here we have got outer fibrous layer outer fibrous layer of joint capsule joint capsule and anteriorly this joint capsule is deficient and it is it is uh, you know this this gap or this uh, uh, deficiency is fulfilled by means of a quadricep tendon patella ligamentum patelli anteriorly and in the midline okay so jo this joint cavity this in uh, there is a, a special kind of bursa which is called suprapatellar bursa look at this synovial lining so joint cavity this joint cavity is continuous with this suprapatellar bursa here because this is synovial layer so this is called suprapatellar bursa and this suprapatellar bursa here we have got a muscle which is called articularis genu muscle this articularis genu muscle this articular articularis genu muscle here it is attached to the suprapatellar bursa so actually during extension this muscle contracts and pulls up this suprapatellar bursa and this suprapatellar bursa is overlaid overlaid by the quadricep muscle tendon so actually in uh, uh, in the inferior part behind the inferior part of the quadricep muscle here we have got suprapatellar bursa here we have got another view of the capsule and this is deficiency in the capsule posterior laterally from where this you know popliteus muscle is coming out and here we have got lateral collateral ligament medial collateral ligament likewise so then what is the blood supply of the knee joint blood supply of the knee joint comes from the periarticular plexus so this periarticular plexus here we have got 10 branches uh, they are participating in this periarticular plexus so what are those 10 branches femoral artery has got two branches descending genicular and descending branch of the lateral circumflex and here we have got this is femoral artery here we have got profunda femoris profunda femoris has got lateral circumflex lateral circumflex has got three branches ascending transverse and descending this descending branch is coming down and participating in this periarticular plexus and descending branch of the lateral circumflex then another artery uh, uh, lateral circumflex lateral circumflex is a branch of Uh, profunda femoris and profunda femoris is a branch of you know this uh, a femoral artery and another artery which is descending genicular it arises directly from the femoral artery descending genicular genu genu is basically another fancy name for the knee joint 
so descending genicular this one and genicular branch of the lateral circumflex okay these two branches then superior medial genicular inferior medial genicular middle genicular superior lateral genicular inferior lateral genicular okay now look at this this here we have got after passing through adductor hiatus the femoral artery become popliteal artery now you can see this femoral popliteal artery in phantom view present it is it becomes fade actually it uh, the uh, in your artist has shown it is now behind the knee joint and here we have got five branches of this popliteal artery now one by one superior medial genicular here superior lateral genicular here then inferior medial genicular then inferior lateral genicular then we have got middle genicular here so these five branches they participate in the formation of this plexus then anterior tibial artery and posterior tibial artery they have got posterior tibial recurrent anterior tibial recurrent and circumflex fibula so popliteal artery basically divides into two anterior tibial which after passing through this interosseous membrane enters the anterior compartment and here we have got posterior tibial so they have got few branches from posterior tibial here we have got sorry anterior tibial here we have got posterior tibial recurrent and here we have got anterior tibial recurrent recurrent because they are again flowing back backwards upwards posterior tibial recurrent anterior tibial recurrent so all these arteries these arteries participate in the formation of this periarticular plexus which gives blood supply to the knee joint again so this capsule of the knee joint is deficient anteriorly or it is fulfilled by the muscle of the Uh, quad uh, tendon of the quadriceps patella and ligamentum patelli so this here we have got vastus lateralis vastus medialis their tendons comes they get attached into the lateral and medial aspect of the patella bone respectively and results in the in the formation of medial patellar retinaculum here and lateral patellar retinaculum so capsule comes and attach to them the nerve supply nerve supply is according to hilton's law and hilton's law states that nerve supply to knee joint comes from the nerve supplying the muscles working on knee joint this law states that whenever an any muscle which are acting on any joint the nerve supply of that muscle would also supply the nerve to the that joint for example in case of knee joint here we have got femoral nerve anteriorly tibial and common peroneal uh, posterior laterally and obturator and saphenous nerve medially so i am going to show you all these nerve one by one here we have got knee joint anterior view most of the muscles have been removed so here we have got common peroneal which winds around the neck of the fibula and divides into two branches superficial and deep superficial nerve supply the lateral compartment of the leg and deep nerve supply the anterior compartment of the leg and here we have got a recurrent branch anterior tibial recurrent of to branch of nerve it supplies nerve supply to the knee joint so common peroneal is from supplying the knee, uh, knee joint from the anterior and lateral aspect now here you can see here we have got femoral nerve femoral nerve arising from the uh, this uh, plexus which is called uh, lumbar plexus and femoral nerve passes behind the inguinal ligament and it gives multiple branches which supply the muscles of the anterior comp 
department and then vastus medialis and then it has got a nerve which is called saphenous nerve saphenous nerve is mainly mainly a cutaneous nerve but it also supply infrapatellar branch which which supplies the knee joint as well knee joint as well and here we have got obturator nerve just these are the muscles which are called muscles of the medial compartment or adductor compartment their main nerve supply is obturator nerve look at this obturator nerve this obturator nerve is actually you know coming from the lumbar plexus and after passing behind the superior ramus of the pelvic uh, pubic bone then it divides into two and anterior and posterior branch this posterior branch pierces the obturator externus and here you can see this uh, this small branch is being supplied to the hip joint where as posterior branch moves downward and after passing through adductor hiatus it gives articular branch to the knee joint so knee joint is also supplied by the obturator nerve and here we have got post looking at the posterior aspect of the uh, thigh or uh, of the leg whole leg and here we have got greater sciatic foramen see that greater sciatic foramen here we have got sciatic nerve coming down this sciatic nerve this sciatic nerve and this sciatic nerve at the upper you know apex of the popliteal fossa divides into two tibial and common peroneal and here we, you can see this articular branch to the knee joint is being given by the tibial nerve likewise here in articular branch to the knee joint is being given by the common peroneal so both common peroneal and tibial which are branches of the sciatic nerve also give you know uh, nerve supply articular nerve supply to the knee joint okay again popliteal fossa rhomboid shape or diamond shape it's it's uh, apex sciatic nerve divides into two this is tibial and here we have got common peroneal and look at here tibial is giving articular branches small articular branches look this one and this one articular branches to the knee joint by tibial and here we have got common peroneal and common peroneal giving this small articular branch this is the posterior view of the popliteal fossa or knee joint so i guess uh, uh, i will divide this knee joint uh, topic in two parts i have covered most of it in this lecture and uh, uh, for the rest of the knee joint i will be making another video so please wait for that thank you very